Here, you've got a Titan missile sitting in, sitting like it's good to go. Super crowded museum. She's 90 feet tall. And those are tanks. You're looking at the outer skins of a tank. There wasn't uh, any inner surface. And this is a giant fuel tank. It's joined here to the oxygen tank. This is the, o the oxygen tank. And this is the end of the first stage. And that's the second stage, basically the tank right there. The engine of the second stage is right here. This is the oxygen for the first stage. And this is the, the fuel tank for the first stage starts here and goes down to and they pump fuel as fast as they can let's have a look let's go have a look and like i said the skins are the outer surface there's no there is stuff inside the tanks there are pipes that have other piping going to it for the electronics and the control of it they have this section here and in this section is what all the wiring these things open up you see that hinge line so this opens up like a door and then it would screw on the other side and you'd undo all these screws and that cover would open up all the wiring goes from one thing to the other is all this is your this is like the umbilical of the rocket and again your your flight controls and everything are going to be in a ring way up there the payload is this white section uh, in this case that looks like a uh, commercial satellite let's go down made a little bit of a missile section here a command and control center this is not what the real one looks like they do not look like this I will insert here a little clip of the real one in Tucson because you can go inside a real one I was in there a little while ago in here. Just takes two keys to fire a missile. Here's your commander's position. Key number one. And then the other guy's position's over here. And Key number two. And that fires. And here's your missile. And you can go all the way down to the bottom. It's worth doing. A couple of brand new engines down there. This thing is brand new. I wonder where they got the mounts for it. I wonder where these big orange things came from. Yeah, we're a museum and we want to mount a rocket. How do you do that? Oh, NASA's got a few of these lying around. I'm pretty sure you can have some. Because these don't look like something they were made. Look at the little spin wheels. They look like they totally adjust the rocket. They level off the rocket with these, these controls here, eh? You see? You see, each mount has them. All right, so this rocket... Wow, is it ever exposed. And it's brand new. Look at her. Need a little bit of light all right let's have a look at this so you got two fuel pumps each each engine is separate and this is the fuel pump for this side and you can go right underneath this thing oh this is so cool i wonder if i should go to a wide angle lens here so and here's the fuel pump on the other side 
movie on going on over there. Making a lot of noise. But you'll notice the two fuel pumps are not the same. Uh, they're the this one has a fatter section over here than the other one. This fuel pump in the exhaust of it has a heat exchanger for the helium that would be used to pressurize the tanks to push the fuel out of the tanks. Basically, believe it or not, this is a tank, this whole bottom chunk. And at the bottom of this tank, inside it, are spherical helium tanks. And they have lines coming out, they come, they come into the engine, Actually, they come down to here, and the, and the helium gets the helium gets heated to uh, gets heated quite a bit in here, and it goes back into the uh, to the top of the fuel tank and the oxygen tank to push the fuel out to pressurize the, the tank. So they've got this one all labeled, and I can go over there and read it. But I'm, I like to guess things, so. I'm gonna take some guesses here. Uh, it, it, it's, if I go over there and read it, it says what this, I'm gonna try and figure out what is the oxygen and what is the fuel. So your two fuel lines are right here. One of them goes to a pipe which goes up to the second section. The other one is just draining the bottom of this tank right here. I think that's what this one is. So that's the fuel and that's the oxygen. I'm guessing, but I can confirm that because in the engine, the fuel goes lower and the oxygen goes higher. So this is the, this is the thrust plate of the whole engine right here. And uh, you'll notice it's mounted by it and it actually gimbals by it. Um, this is your fuel insertion right here. And above it is going to be the oxygen, the liquid oxygen insertion. So I can tell right now that this is the fuel line, this is the fuel line, this is the fuel side, fuel line, fuel side, so that's fuel. And this is oxygen. I can confirm that if I go over here and read it. Yeah, nasty, nasty fuel, hydrozyne. And so this other one is gonna say oxygen. The oxidizer, liquid oxygen. Cool. So what is going on here is this is a gear, this is a gear drive right here. And there's an impeller right here for the fuel. And there's an impeller right here for the oxygen and they are pumping like mad just like mad they go into here other things that are going on <laughs> there are some other things going on the pump these engines i believe are started by nitrogen pressure from the ground they're mounted in the silo and they get they basically get air started and i'm wondering if that's this line right here it wouldn't surprise me if that was this line right here and this gets hooked up to the ground and it's the first thing that spins up the fuel pump later on so the nitrogen gets the thing spinning this is all the hydrogen pumping section there'll be another thing that is a pressure sensor somewhere which could be in this line right there and it will trigger the fuel valves to open when it's got pressure and then it goes mad let's go to the other side you can see how the exhaust pipe of this fuel pump is pretty clean and the other one is bigger it's got the heat exchanger in it but otherwise the fuel pumps are the same a couple of things that are happening right here kind of looking at this engine right now so this is your fuel this is your fuel being injected into the the plate um, as the fuel is coming down you can see a pipe coming off and this pipe's heading over to the fuel pump so this is pressurized by the fuel pump and so it's actually running itself a little there's basically a little rocket engine inside each one of these and there's basically a little rocket inside they're, they're using the two fuels to spin a rocket inside it you know to make basically a little rocket and spin an impeller with a rocket in here and that's what spins the pump once the engine's running so to get power to you need pressurized fuel and this looks like a sensor so it's taking pressure off the line and that would be a pressure sensor 
but that line goes to feed the fuel pump and this line feeds the engine. I'm trying to figure out where the fuel comes back if it does that, because I'm told that all of these guys are pumping fuel. And I'm told that it turns around in here, goes back up the other one, which I find really hard to believe because, and look, it's true because they've got a drain down here. They have a drain for testing or for something. So the fuel goes back up and now I can't find where it gets grabbed. So right here is the liquid oxygen going into the, this is where the liquid oxygen is behind that. So I'm just trying to find where the fuel comes back up that's been cooling the bell and how it comes back up. And it gets collected somehow. It comes out of here somehow. Oh, it must just get burned in the bottom of this one. This thing is brand new, eh? When she sits on the launch pad, she's sitting on four bolts. Just, <laughs> it's sitting on these four things. And those would be explosive bolts. You can see that the those little handles, you can see on the other one, it's running this, they run this thing. They level, they level this little platform. But right that, that would be an explosive bolt right there and it would pop when this thing's ready to go. And here's what one looks like when it's been fired. Here's your four fuels going in. So liquid oxygen, liquid fuel, fuel, oxygen, that's a fuel pump, that's a fuel pump. Yeah, that's what she looks like after she's been fired. More rocket pieces over here. This looks like the top of a Titan missile. This is where the nuclear weapon goes. This part here is the mount of it, and the nuclear weapon actually it sits right on this plate. And this picture of one right here, this is in the Tucson, Arizona Museum, and they had to cut this opening so that the satellites could see this. And this section, it held a whole bunch of little metal balls to confuse radar. Oh, and uh, that's pretty cool stuff right there. That is the instrument ring of an Apollo rocket. So an Apollo rocket, the, the brain of the whole thing is just this ring. All the computers, I don't know if this is, uh, is it a Saturn? Yeah, it is. It is a Saturn. This ring is the, this is the brains of the whole thing. This is what controls the whole rocket. These are the flight computers are in here. Let's see if we can find them. Let's keep looking around here. Something sat on those platforms. That tank was used for something. Sphere. A bunch of stuff is missing. Look at all these things that are missing. There's just tons of stuff in there. Electronics all removed. I think the computer sat in this section right here. Look at all the electrical connections. There's a ton of stuff missing from this. There's one of these in Houston that's complete. And what is this motor? This is an upper stage, maybe. This is not a Saturn. This is maybe this. This is the. Uh, this powered the second and third stages. But we can really see it pretty good here. So let's let's look at it. Let's see what we can find out about it. This is the rocket from the second stage and third stage of a Saturn. So this is 
certified for human powered flight. And there's a lot of things going on here. This bell to cool it when it was fired, these little pipes are actually full of fuel and one of them goes down. They, the fuel goes in two directions. It goes down one pipe down to the end and it gets turned over and it comes back up the other one and into this collector. So you see all these little pipes, you see how every second one goes into this collector? And so the fuel, it's now under pressure and it's now been heated and it goes into this collector. This is not all the fuel of the engine. This is just what's being used to cool. But it goes into here, goes back up and back into the turbo pump. I wonder what's in the sphere. I don't know much about second stage engines. And you can tell that this thing expands. It's got expansion joints everywhere. This whole bell gets really hot. And over here, this is an exhaust. What else is going on here? So your, your main fuel pumps inside here. So crowded here. Here's a bunch of Saturn stuff. That sure looks like a Saturn. Oh my goodness. Well, this is really showing it quite quite intensely here. This shows the cooling rings. This is just the bell. This is really, let's go to the other side because it's probably lit better. But so this is recovering the fuel. They're using fuel to cool the engine. And so fuel is gonna go, this whole ring gets pressurized. These are fuels going in here and the fuel is going into these rods. And so fuel from the tank is being pressurized down all these rods to cool it. Cause this is the thrust chamber inside here. So fuel's coming down these rods to cool them. It comes all the way down. They come all the way down. They go down to the bottom and they, oh, my light didn't. So fuel goes into this ring by these holes, pressurizes this area. And then the fuel comes down these rods, comes down to the bottom, and then it moves over one. This is another pressure ring, and they move over one, and it goes back up, and it goes up, and it goes into this. And so now your warmed up fuel is collecting in this big bugger. And they're actually using this ring as the, um, it's a thrust vector. It's actually holding on to the engine, it's frame. And it's all collected back up here. Oh, I put a dish here. And goes back into the engine. This is pretty, pretty cool. Oh, we're on the back side of the thrust plate here. I wonder why, oh, that's how it, that's how it mounts. Um, the top of this, we're at the top side. The top is liquid oxygen and the bottom is the fuel. But this is the very back of it here. And this is the spray, wow. So they had to, they had to make this section, what was happening is when, before they had all the, diff, the, the veins on it, it was just a mess of fire going on in here and it, was, it would make hot spots and it would burn holes all the way through. So then they came up with this stuff here and it sort of localized the, the fire burning into one little area and really made the air fuel mixture mix better. This is showing quite nicely here what's going on. The, um, the other fluid is, is in the backside here and this ring is what's mounted up to that. And so the fuel that's in this area here is, is behind this and coming down all these lines. So the fuel in this area, in this pressured area, is what's behind that ring, <laughs> is what's behind that ring and coming down those lines. And it's got a part number if you'd like to buy this. It's from the Smithsonian, courtesy of NASA. I wonder if that's titanium. 
I'll bet you it is. So these are the nozzles. And they're quite big. They're, they're really so much bigger than the Titan stuff I've studied. Pretty cool to see this here. And here, you got a bunch of stuff that you need for firing a rocket. When you fuel a rocket, you need to have control. You need to know what's going on. And look, the whole thing's right here. It's telling you what's going on, what all the tanks have in them. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Rather well done setup, eh? I don't know if you can see. And I think this is how you fuel a rocket. You need one of these. The 54 missiles that were sitting in silos for 25 years were retired and they were put in a warehouse at a US Air Force base for a little while. Then they were stored outside and then they were repurposed to launch commercial satellites in the 1990s. And I believe they all launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base. At the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to the only remaining Titan II nuclear missile silo that still exists. And it's just south of Tucson, Arizona. And I have visited it and filmed it quite extensively. And if you'd like to see it, have a look at these two videos.